Okay. There we go. Okay, this week in the wonderful world of new products, Lady Ada, we've got the following. Yeah, I'm going to start actually with a, a product that's a couple weeks old, but we for, didn't get to demo because we had uh, people visiting. This is the new Smart Matrix. Uh, Breakout add-on for the Teensy 3.1. So this allows you, uh, you add a Teensy on top, as you can see here, and then you can use a micro SD card to load animations that are displayed on a matrix. And so it just kind of like shows a, you. Like a GIF? Like a GIF or like text or all sorts of stuff. Um, so you can check out the Smart Matrix site, but I have a the demo on the overhead. You want to go to the overhead? Yeah, we're going to the overhead. Okay. I know it's going to work out a little bit. So we'll try. We're going to try. So, yeah, hold on. Let me zoom in out. Um, so you can see, uh, hold on, do a lock on the. Um, so you can see it's a it's a 32 by 32 matrix, and it can play like gifs and it has like text and like cool effects. Um, and the smart matrix board plugs in on the back here, and it just plugs in, and then you just have to add a power supply. You can have like animated gifs and stuff. So it's a really neat way to make a little like LED matrix frame. Um, using a TNC 3.1, which has like DMA, so it can do a really good job of, of having these beautiful colors and effects. Yeah, you can see it, it's pretty clear. Okay. All right, moving right along. SIM card holder. This one's pretty straightforward, but uh, still handy, and it goes well with another new product. It's just a holder for SIM cards. So, you know, the SIM cards that you have in your phone and stuff? Well, if you want to have those in a project, which would especially be useful if you're using, uh, making a cellular phone type project that uses a SIM card for authentication, uh, these little holders, we use them all the time. You slide the SD card, uh, the, the SIM card in, and you lock it down, and they work really great. They're surface mount, but they're really easy to use. And um, on the overhead, I can show one being used as well. You want to pop over the overhead? So, for example, here is um, one on the uh, Fona breakout. And this is the same holder. So you snap it open, and you flip open the holder. And then the SD, it's, I keep saying SD, I mean SIM card, uh, slots in like this. You line it up, and then close, and it's like nice and secure. Um, they're really easy to use. Um, we like them. And so uh, since we're going to be putting some cellular modules in the store, we thought these would be a handy uh, accessory. Speaking of, we got a module. It's a cellular module. It's the SIM 808, which is like our favorite GSM, GPRS, and GPS module. This module has, uh, it's basically all in one cell phone and also has GPS capability, which is really neat. So you basically can have like a cell phone that can do voice, data, text, you know, SM, you, know you can do SMSs, you can make phone calls, you can connect to websites, you can you actually act as a web server as well. Um, not a very good one, but it does work. Uh, and also has a GPS built in, uh, MediaTek uh, 3339, which is a, a really good chipset. Um, and we use this in our Fona 808 breakout and uh, the soon to arrive Fona 808 shield. But because this module is hand solderable, like all the pins are on the outside, we thought this would be a really great addition to our store. Um, the other module that we use, the SIM 800, the pads are in the underneath, so you can't really hand solder it. You have to use a reflow oven of some sort. Um, but this module, it's not that much more expensive. You know, you also get the GPS. It's a little bit bigger, but it's hand solderable, and we think that makes it worth it. So this shows you the uh, module decapped, so you can see the chipsets used. It uses um, the MediaTek MT6260. That's the cell phone chipset. It's got the um, analog front end for the cell phone. Stuff is done by the RF7196. And then for GPS, this has the MediaTek MT3336. Now, when you get this, you're not going to get like antennas or like a TFT display or buttons or all that. Like, you still have to add all this like additional circuitry, like you know, antennas and, and regulator and battery and, and analog stuff to um, for the headphone, for example, or LEDs if you want to see indicators. Um, but for the most part, the amount of extras that you need to add is pretty minimal. Like, you don't really need that many more uh, components to make this into a cell phone. And we have a link to the schematic as well as all the data sheets and stuff. Um, you can follow our schematic, basically make your own board and add cellular GPS to your next project. Okay. Next up. This is kind of freaky. These are real um, Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi dongles. Yeah, these are the official ones. Yeah. Um, it has a little Raspberry Pi logo. Yeah, I, I want. I just want to give warning because this, this one is. There's a couple little tricks about this. This is a Broadcom chipset, 
and uh, we couldn't get it working on a Windows computer. We didn't find the drivers. I guess we could have spent some more time, maybe found some drivers, but. So maybe it only works on a Raspberry Pi. It's kind of, well, not only is it intended for the Raspberry Pi, but if you have an older installation of the Raspberry Pi, it doesn't have the drivers either because it's only the most recent installs have the, the Broadcom driver for this Wi-Fi ah. chipset. So let's be clear, what this is geared towards, if you have a latest Raspberry Pi with the latest Raspbian, yep. this is for you. If you have like a Windows XP machine and you plug this in, it's probably not gonna, you're probably not gonna have a good time. I don't one, know. You have, Raspberry, you, have a, you have a XP machine. Which is why do you even have that? Well, what? no, maybe you need it. Maybe you have to have it. Like you have equipment that no runs excuse. on it. Yeah, no excuse. Yeah, there's, no. there's good excuses. Um, so it, it, it's for the latest Raspbian. It's just gonna be, if you have older Raspberry Pi, you plug it in, it's not gonna work. You have to do an update and upgrade. Which also means that if you are using a custom kernel or custom distribution or something that you're doing that's uh, not like stock Raspbian, um, this also may not work. So, it, you know, because it is very new and then like, you know, we're everybody's still adapting to um, how fast Raspbian moving. Um, however, the cool thing about this module is that it will be the only Wi-Fi module that's supported by Windows 10 IoT yeah. when Windows IoT supports Wi-Fi which it doesn't as of this video recording. Perf. Okay. So it's it's just kind of a very like if you it's very specific if you have a recent Raspberry Pi uh, installation Good. If you're planning on using Windows 10 IoT and you're willing to wait until they release the Wi-Fi support, this will be definitely supported. Mm. Um, anything else, it's it's not clear. You'll have to research whether the Broadcom chipset in this module is used, um, is, is supported by your operating system or computer. So you see why it's it like this is... doesn't work with Windows NT for work groups. Uh, probably not. It does not. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't okay. look really hard for the Windows 7 drivers. I, I should, yeah. I should, should take it over. Folks should probably just put it in a drawer if they want to wait for the Windows IoT. Stuff. Yeah, okay. but, but we're stocking it, and for if you're using a modern news or Raspbian, it's great. Okay, so... Um, so I give yeah. warning. Okay, so the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, is this. It's this. What is this? It's this. This! This is it. Um, this is the Bluefruit LE SPI. And um, we've been releasing a lot of Bluefruit LE modules, and this is kind of our last standalone module that we're going to do for a bit. We're going to explore some other mix and matches. This one is a full Bluetooth Energy module with, you know, that's a really nice module um, that has uh, FCCC uh, modular certificates. Um, we have example code for it. Uh, it works with our iOS and Android apps. Um, it's based off the NRF 51A22. It has a lot of stuff that we've, we've built into the firmware. Um, and one of the neat things about having our own firmware rather than like using like the RF Duino or like some, you know, TI chipset module that's already pre-made or the Blue Giga is we actually get to control what's in it. So this is the first time I've seen a module that can use SPI, not just UART to control. Usually you need a software serial port and this module has SPI so you can use any four or five pins on an Arduino or a microcontroller. You don't have to have a software serial, hardware serial port. You need clock, MISO, MOSI, chip select, and then we suggest IRQ and reset. Um, those just make things a little bit faster. Uh, so we have this hooked up here um, on the overhead. Yeah, let's go there. And I also have some things going on too. So. Um, okay, so here we are with uh, the module and we've got the little uh, red indicator telling you, hey, you know, it's, it's time to connect and do stuff. And we have a NeoPixel ring attached, so it's gonna do this demo. You wanna do this demo? Yeah, so okay. we can do it with my phone, and we're gonna, and we also have a watch app, so this is. Um, okay, so let's shove this over here. Yeah, so this is running on iOS. Okay, and it also then, works for and, Android. And then do you wanna, uh, first yeah, we gotta sure. connect, yeah. So, so connect. Connect up. So use our, um, use our app to connect, and we're gonna do the, the color picker demo. Can you say okay? Okay. So okay. let's say I pick blue and then I send and it turns blue. If I send green, it turns green. If I send red, it sends red. So basically, you know, you can, this demo shows just like color picking. There's a lot of other demos we have. Um, can I just show them off even though they're not gonna do anything? So we have a control pad so you can, you know, if you wanna have a project that has like a, like a game pad type interface, oh, yeah. um, you can use this. You can turn on sensors like quaternion, accelerometer, gyro, magnetometer, and location from the phone. So you can use your phone as basically an accelerometer or gyroscope or GPS and pipe that data over Bluetooth. Okay, so I'm gonna, here's my, I have an Apple Watch and I'm gonna turn on, I'm gonna use Bluefruit LE and okay. it's gonna ask me something, I'll see. Uh, let's do the color picker. Color picker. 
And so Hold I'm going to do, I'll it. do RGB. And then what I'm going to do is, uh, I, have to, I have to hold you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going really to tell. I'm gonna try to change the color here to, to something else. And then hit we can't send. see your, we can't see your one. Yeah, no, you can. So I just yeah. hit send. All right, so you hold it, I'll, and I'll, I'll set it to be a green yeah, color. Yeah, you can make it green. I'm gonna set it more green. More green, and hit send. And send, yeah, it works. So yeah, so it works. So I'm using my watch control, and then we can also do. Um, I'll do palette, that's a lot palette's easier. That's a lot easier. Because what you could do is just be like, hey, like, here's the deal. I just want green. Or, Yellowish. Yeah, or I want, like, red. And then you yeah. can swipe to get more colors. Yeah, oops. So, like, blue. And then I, oh, and then I can disconnect at any time, which I didn't want to do. <laughs> Oop. Oh, did it disconnect? No. Okay, We're there good. you go. So that's a, that's, a, that's a live demo. That's dangerous. So we did, yeah, we did the demo with iOS, and you can use your iWatch if you want as well. We're, we're working on that um, support as well. But you can use any Android or iOS device to control the Bluetooth. Um, so we have it in two flavors, UART flavor, SPI flavor. Use whichever one you want. Um, I kind of like SPI because it's a little bit faster. And again, you can use any pins. You don't have to worry about flow control or like interrupt requirements for the software serial, which is always a pain. And it's all easier to use with any kind of mic control. It's very easy to port the, um, the library over to your favorite micro. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, you know what that was? Those new products. Those new products. Yeah.